Hey, what's up guys? It is officially March 2023, and that means that it is time for a new Too Tall Toby leaderboard challenge. So if we go to tootalltoby.com slash leaderboard, we can see that all the info here has been updated. There's a new link here that says March 2023 speed model these three parts. So if we click on that image banner, we can see that that takes us to the images of the three drawings that we are challenged to create for this leaderboard challenge. So what I'm gonna do is take Take that group of images, put them over on my second screen. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here on the leaderboard page and I'm gonna click compete for March, 2023. That brings up our timer and then I'm gonna slide this timer over here to the right side of the screen uh, so that I can see the timer. And then I'm gonna take my CAD system and I'm gonna move that over to the, the left a little bit. I'm using SolidWorks here, but you can use any CAD system you want. The main thing that's important is that when you're making your recording, you have to be able to see the, the clock in the recording. And when you're done with each challenge, you have to be able to clearly see that you were able to calculate the correct mass. So with that, I'm gonna get into it here, take this challenge. Let's see how fast we can complete this March 2023 leaderboard challenge. Ow! So before I get started in this speed modeling challenge, I just wanna make sure that I'm as comfortable as possible. And there's no better way to feel comfortable while speed modeling than by repping and wearing a Too Tall Toby all black technical tips and tricks shirt. These shirts are the most comfortable shirts in the CAD game. They're all black, they ship worldwide. Get yours today at tootalltoby.com slash merch and that way you can be as comfortable as possible when you're taking on this speed modeling challenge. So normally what you would want to do is uh, look at these models, look at these drawings ahead of time and kind of come up with a game plan, but I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm not even going to practice. I'm just going to right away jump into this here. And uh, for this model here, I think that, you know, looking at this model, I would either use one of two approaches. I would either <clears throat> start out here on the, <clears throat> I'm going to burn off some more time drinking some of my drink. <clears throat> I would either start out here on the uh, right or the, the front plane here and create this kind of L shape, or I would start out here on the top looking down and create this kind of footprint of the part. Now, if this tombstone over here was just a regular tombstone, then I'd probably go with the L shape technique. But since this tombstone is coming up at an angle, I think it's going to be easier for me to start out with the footprint. So in other words, I think I'm going to start out by creating this shape here and extruding that shape up to the 14 millimeter height, 14 millimeters. And then once I have that shape, the footprint uh, extruded, then I'm going to set myself up to create this kind of angled tombstone shape. And once I have that angled tombstone shape, probably the next section that I'll approach will be these rings, these, uh, these circular extrudes here, the circular extrude here, and the circular extrude here. And then I would probably attack the rib section of the model because I've got those two rings. I can just easily bridge them together. And then I'll finish off by doing the cut extrudes for these holes. So it's always good to come up with a game plan before you tackle a model, uh, whether you're getting it from a 2D print or from like a napkin sketch from a customer. But... Again, for this leaderboard challenge, you probably wanna do that before you click start because now I've burned off basically 90 seconds for no reason. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's see if we can make up some of that time. I'm gonna go in here to a new part. This is gonna be a part in millimeters and it's got a material of 1060 alloy. So now that I've got that uh, 1060 alloy assigned, I'm ready to start sketching. I'm gonna follow my game plan. I'm gonna start out on the top plane. I'm gonna create a rectangle here using the auto dimensions for the rectangle with a, uh, whoops, I'll use tab to go back there, with a 100 by 90 rectangle dimensions. And I will take these two uh, entities and make them midpoint. Then I'll do an extrusion and I'll bring that out to a height of 14. I guess I could have put those fillets right in the original sketch. I'm just gonna choose to put them in afterwards. So I'll make those fillets 15 and that's gonna be on this edge and this edge. But I definitely could have just included them in the original, um, in the original sketch. Sometimes when I'm doing these types of challenges, I like to change the part color just to be a little bit closer to the part color from the print. Just It just makes it a little easier for me to see uh, if I've forgotten anything or if I'm you know properly matching up with the print. Certainly not necessary, and it's probably gonna burn off some extra time if you do that in this challenge. 
So I'll pick this back face of the model, begin a sketch, go into my S key. I'm gonna come up here, uh, single click, come back, hold my mouse over that endpoint, and create a radius there of 54 over two. And then I'll close that thing off by coming down to this corner and closing off over here. Now I'm gonna make that uh, tangent. And then if I make these two lines equal, that should center the tombstone above the origin. So I could have done a vertical relationship, but you could also make these two lines equal, and that should also enforce that that tombstone is centered. Little, uh, little trick there. And then this is gonna be 93 from the base. So I'll create a dimension here at 93 from the base. S key extrude. That's gonna go out to a distance of 10 millimeters. And we're gonna to wanna to reverse direction on that. So right mouse button, reverse direction, and then right mouse button again. All right, awesome. So now for this next, uh, for this ring up top, it starts out two millimeters off of this face. So I could either, um, during the extrusion, say I wanna do it from an offset, or I could sketch it on a plane two millimeters off. Actually, it's called out from this face. So you can do it either way, um, or maybe you could come up with something else, something a little more clever. I'm just gonna do S key reference geometry plane and make a new plane two millimeters offset there. Select that plane, begin to sketch, orient my view. I'm gonna wake up the center point here, and then uh, you wanna remember that if you drop this onto the arc, it doesn't create a relationship, but if you drop it here at the point, it does. So that saves you an extra step of having to add a co-radial relationship there. And then that's gonna get extruded out to a depth of 14, and I'll right mouse button, reverse direction, right mouse button and now I'm going to select this face select the, the plane begin to sketch orient my view and I'm gonna give that a diameter of 30 nope 55 and hit escape pick one hold control pick the other let go of control make that horizontal and then I'm going to declare that I want that to be at a distance of 60 from the end of the part so we'll make that 60 there from the end of the part. And now we can take that circle and we can extrude that up to a height of three millimeters. All right, this is looking awesome so far. I'm gonna go to my front plane, begin to sketch, orient my view. And I'm going to, um, let me just hide this plane here. I'm going to uh, create a line that just kind of picks up the midpoint here, uh, comes down, uh, and then I'm gonna create a radius here. That radius is 15. And get that horizontal. And then that's gonna come over here to this midpoint as well. And then I'll just make those two tangent. So that way, you know, this sketch is fully defined. It's going right from midpoint to midpoint. And then I'll go to the command features rib. Uh, we could also do this with a thin feature extrusion. Either one would work, but rib seems to work pretty well in this case. So I'll make that 10 millimeters for the rib. That kind of fills in everything. And now all that's left is to create my cut extrude for this first cut extrude. So that's going to be at um, 30 millimeters. S key extrude cut and right mouse button through all. And then here's an example of the Ivan exploit, which is not allowed in this challenge. The Ivan exploit would let me hold control and drag this, this circle here, drag and drop. And then when I let it go, I could just say delete the sketch relationships and boom. And now if I was to solve this thing for the mass, uh, if I go to evaluate mass properties, we can see that the mass is uh, five, five, two, four, uh, which, oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing. Uh, wait, what am I missing here? That should be correct, right? 30. Uh, let's see here. This is 30. Yep, good. What am I missing? 14, 100, 90. This is 10. This one here is 14. 10. This goes up to 93. Oh, I know what I'm missing. Duh. That hole is not the correct diameter. So if I change that hole there to 32 and then rebuild, um, we can see that if we do a mass properties that we're coming up with the correct mass here, the mass of 520, but this is not allowed. Okay, even though the mass is correct, this is an example of the Ivan exploit, which is that the uh, when you're removing material from two parallel faces, the material that you remove, uh, because those faces are parallel, it, it yields the location of that cut inconsequential with regards to the mass of the, the model. But that's not allowed. You have to lock down all your sketches correctly relative to the print. So this needs to be concentric here in order for this to be correct. And that's why I watch the videos and validate the videos at the end. 
So I can exit that sketch now, and now we can see that if we go into mass properties, we've got a mass here of 520, and that is the correct mass. And so now I'm ready to, to click, click here to finish model one, and I'm ready to, to begin model two. So that's a little uh, explanation of the Ivan exploit. Uh, with that, let's move on to model number two, which is this model. Actually, I've got these out of order on the IMGUR. I gotta fix the, I'm gonna have to fix this post, but it should be this model here. Um, I'll fix this right after the video. So if you're doing this during the, while I'm making this video, I apologize. But uh, this this guy here is supposed to have a mass of one, two, one, four. And I think my game plan for this one is gonna be to do a revolve. So I'll do a revolve here to get this basic shape. So I'll just draw half of it with the center line and then I'll revolve about that center line. That'll give me that basic shape. And then from there, I think, uh, you know, phase two of this design will be to create this boss sticking up out of the part, create this counter bore here going down into the part. And then I'll create the slot. So there's a slot here. I think I'll probably sketch that on top uh, as opposed to sketching it from the side. And then I'll finish off by clearing out the underside of this thing. So again, it's just good to have a, a good game plan when you get started. Uh, it's good to kind of understand what you're gonna be going for as you go through those models. So let's see if we can get this second model created. Um, and again, you can practice, practice, practice before you actually start the timer. It's good to, to practice a lot uh, so you can make sure you're getting the best possible time. So this is gonna be a part in millimeters as well. We got a second part in millimeters here. This one's in plain carbon steel. So let's assign that material. And I'm gonna to go to the front plane, begin a sketch, and I'm gonna create a shape like this. This is gonna be 120 over two. And then I'll come up at an angle here and we'll come across and close that thing off. And then we'll say that this has got a height of, what is the height of that base? 20. And then I'm gonna single click this line and single click the end point of that line. And that lets me create a dimension for the angle here, which is supposed to be eight degrees, eight degrees for that angle there. And then there is a fillet on top here and that fillet has a radius of eight. I'll just include that right in this sketch. And then we don't need a center line. I like to have a center line when I do my revolved parts, but we certainly don't need a center line. Uh, but once you have one, it makes it a little easier because you don't have to select anything. And there we go, there's our first revolve. I'm gonna just change the color of this part again to kind of match the, the print, makes it a little easier when I'm looking over the print at the end. And so now I'm gonna create a circle here with a diameter of 40. And that's gonna be vertical to the origin. So we'll make that vertical and we'll give ourselves a, uh, this is gonna be a distance from the origin of 37. So 37 from the origin to that boss. And that is going to get extruded out to a height of, this is one of these spots where I'll use some basic arithmetic. So this is gonna be 70 total minus the 20 from the, um, base thickness. So it's going to be 70 minus 20. Just in case you can't do that in your head. Boom, just type it in there. And then for direction two, um, you want to make sure you realize that if you only go in direction one, you're going to be left with this little lip here. So you want to make sure when you do your extrude, you go up to next, or maybe there's some other ways to do this, right? We could probably do it with insert face delete. I never miss an opportunity to use insert face delete. It's always a fun command to uh, jam into any model that I create. So insert face delete is always good there. Uh, S key fill it. I'll make this a radius of eight and then pick this face or this edge here, select this face, begin a sketch, and that's gonna have a cut extrude on it with a diameter of 15, S key extrude cut, and I'm gonna right mouse button through all, right mouse button. Alrighty, that's looking pretty good. And then on this side, it's gonna be a counter bore. So we can use whole wizard type uh, features, whole wizard creation type features. And when it comes to counter bore, uh, what I do in, in my solid in my software, which is SolidWorks, is I use this option for custom sizing for the counter bore. And that way I can just type in 10, 30, five, which is the standard order of the whole call app. So 10, 35 makes it very easy if you uh, learn what the order is of that call out uh, compared to your CAD software. So 10, 30, I'm just using the tab key on my keyboard to navigate through there. And then this is gonna be vertical to the origin and I'm going to get into a smart dimension here. So let's make this vertical. And then that has a dimension from that other boss, uh, which is a dimension of 75. 
and that looks beautiful. That's our counter bore. So like this face, begin a sketch, orient the view, S key, I'll create a rectangle here. This rectangle is gonna have a width of 20, and then the length here, it doesn't matter, so I'll make it 169, because that's a fun number, and S key extrude cut to a depth of five. That slot is five millimeters deep. And now the only thing left to do is just to kind of hollow this thing out on the underside. So I'll go front plane, begin a sketch, orient my view, and maybe I'll take this edge here and just offset it at five millimeters and we'll reverse that so it goes to the inside. And then all I need to do is create a horizontal, vertical, and horizontal line here. And you notice that I dropped it right on this point, but when you do an offset or a convert, usually these points are pretty flexible. So you can grab these points and kind of drag them around uh, to get the desired results. So, you know, for example, I can make that coincident there and that way I can just drag this onto here, I can just drag this point onto here. And the final thing that I need to do is the height from the top. I believe that height is supposed to be 10 millimeters. Yes, 10 millimeters top thickness. So I can pre-select that edge and then go features revolved cut and cut that thing open. And it's really nice when this part is the same color as the part on the drawing. It gives me a real nice view of this thing. Um, I've got my view tangent edges, view display tangent edges as phantom, the same as well as the print. So it kind of lets me quickly look over that thing and make sure that everything looks correct. And then I can go to evaluate mass properties and I can see that I am coming up with the mass of 1214, which is the uh, mass that we're looking for on the print or on the, uh, the answer key, I should say. So click here when finished with model two, Boom, no problem, speedy, speedy times on these things. So let's move on now to our third model in the IMG UR, and that is going to be this model here. This one is in inches, so it's a little bit different, inches. And uh, by the way, if you're ever trying to speed model, you know, and you wanna make sure that you're feeling very comfortable, one thing that you can do is you can pick up one of these Too Tall Toby t-shirts, tooltalltoby.com slash merch. These are really gonna make you feel comfortable when you're trying to speed model. So uh, don't forget about these shirts. They are, uh, they are the softest shirt in the CAD game. Uh, I forgot to advertise them at the other two models, so I'll, I'll try to remember to do that next month. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna be speed modeling, you gotta be comfy. All right, so for this model, how are we gonna start with this model? I mean, there's there's gonna be, again, a couple of ways that we could do this. We could do this kind of looking down from the, the top view here. We could do it looking at it from the front view. I kind of feel like uh, this view here makes the most sense. And and by the way, if you wanted to make this, you know, the top, if you wanna orient this part differently, that's fine. Um, as long as the dimensions are correct and everything's in the right spot. It doesn't matter if you model it upright or horizontal or whatever. But I'm kind of feeling like that view there should be my first sketch because I can take that whole view and just extrude it out to two millimeter or to two inches. And then after I have that two inches, then I could go back in and add this extra geometry here. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, maybe that, maybe I'll even just stop it at this 8.25 dimension. Um, and that way, you know, I could just extrude these circles afterwards. So I'm thinking that's going to be my approach. Um, you know, for this one, I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it a little bit more. I'm not gonna come up with a full game plan, but I think that's gonna be my first feature. Then my second feature will probably be these circles, and then my third feature will be this circle here sticking out the end, and then I'll finish up with the cut extrude for these holes and for this hole here. So it's kind of like my my loose game plan, uh, but I'm getting excited because we're already almost two minutes into this one. So let's go, let's get into it here. We're gonna use our inch template, and this one is gonna be made out of 1060 aluminum. So 1060 aluminum, and I'm gonna go top plane, begin a sketch, orient my view. And I'm gonna create a sketch that, I'm gonna actually start it right here at the origin, uh, come up to a distance of, I don't know how much, 2.5, yep, 2.5. I'm gonna come over like so. I'm gonna create a radius here at 2.5 uh, to about there. And then I'm going to create a horizontal entity that goes, I don't know how far, and then I'll finish this thing off here like so. And then I'll take that line and make that for construction. And I'm just gonna take that whole thing and mirror it and running into an error there. I don't really like that. Maybe this midpoint is the error. Okay, cool. And that's probably because of this 2.5 and probably because this this arc picked up a coincident relationship. Yep, it sure did to that center line. So, all right, so now that's gonna be, like I said, that's gonna be my 8.25 uh, dimension. So I'll make that 8.25 if you're following along and watching the print. And so that means that the center from here to here is gonna be five inches. And then this width here is two inches. Wow, that sketch really didn't have that many dimensions. That's pretty cool, nice and fully defined. So I'll extrude that out to a height of two 
And I think I'll make that mid-plane. And then I'm gonna um, change the color of the part, just because I like, I like it when the colors match. And then I'm gonna go to this face, select the face, begin a sketch, orient my view, and just make a circle here with a, radius, a diameter of four inches, S key extrude, and I'm gonna use that up to vertex shortcut, where I just pick a vertex and run it right up to that vertex. And then I'll come down to this face here, and this will be a circle with a diameter of 1.5 inches. And then that's gonna go out to a depth of, it doesn't look like this dimension's really called out. So I'm gonna do 11 minus 8.25. Save myself some math. Whoops, 11 minus 8.25. Okay, cool, that looks good. And I'm gonna go top plane, begin to sketch, orient my view. And I'm gonna create a line arc, line tombstone. So line, arc, line tombstone and i'll take that point and that and make those really i can just make this concentric right just make this concentric and then i'm going to give that a radius of 1.5 s key extrude and i'll right mouse button through all both right mouse button oh look at how this thing is coming together this is great gonna get this one in under five minutes i think all right here we go we're gonna make that a diameter of two S key, extrude cut, right mouse button, through all, right mouse button. And then I'm gonna take this and S key and make that a diameter of, what is it, what is it? 0.75 S key, extrude, right mouse button, through all. And I'm going to mass properties and 4.79, stop. Ah, oh, man, 502, I was so close. I was really going for it for that under five minutes. So I did get that last one, 4.79. Uh, that does match the uh, the print here. And so that gives me a total time of 1927. So I was going pretty good there. I think I maybe could have gone a little fast, but you know, you give it a try. You see if you can get yours done any faster than me. Now that I'm done with uh, my, my creation of that video, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that video, I'm gonna post it. I'll show you where I'll post it in a minute. But first I'll put in my name here and my, my CAD system, SOLIDWORKS 2015. And I'll do submit to leaderboard. And let's see here. Oh yeah, first place. First place, that's what I like to see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a video, uh, post it somewhere, post it on YouTube or <clears throat> Reddit or LinkedIn or post it somewhere where I can post a video. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to submit that video as a reply to this video here, the Synthwave video from March 2023. So if you click on that video, you'll see here's the video and you're going to go down into the comments and you're going to say, um, you know, here's my video. Whoops, I'm not signed in on this this machine, but you're going to go down to the comments. You're going to say, here's my video and uh, here's a link to my video. Check it out. And then once I see your reply, you know, I will see that you submitted something because you'll make it on the leaderboard, but it'll say you're not verified. Well, once I see your video, I will watch the video. Make sure you didn't do any Ivan exploits. I'm going to be looking to make sure the clock is visible. I'm going to be looking to make sure that it's very, you know, it's very clear that you're showing the, uh, the correct mass on the, uh, on the print. So these are the things that I'm going to be looking for. Make sure that you're showing the correct mass. Make sure that you're not using any Ivan exploits. Make sure the clock is visible. And then once I do that, I'll go and I'll say, all right, your video is verified and I'll include a link to your video. And that way, everybody else in the community can watch your video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of like a pseudo tutorial on how to build these parts. And I'm looking forward to watching everybody's videos and verifying them. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, be sure to pick up a t-shirt, the softest t-shirt in the CAD game. And uh, I will see everyone on the leaderboard. See you, everybody.